Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Before we get to today's incredible detailed piece on Richard Sherman and Tom Brady, I just wanted to take a moment to let you guys know I live stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 9 p.m. Pacific time, and I've completely revamped my TikTok content to include bonus content of the videos I make here. So stuff like players who retire too early and, you know, players that are about to be traded will now be featured on my TikTok page. So be sure to check it out and... Hey, you, you mad, bro? <laughs> it's funnier every time I see it. Oh, I think Tom wow. is mad. Richard Sherman and Tom Brady, two players that will one day see themselves enshrined in the NFL Hall of Fame. Two players that were not supposed to be as good as they ended up becoming. Two players that were drafted in the tail end of the NFL draft. Two Super Bowl champions and two players that revolutionized the way their positions would be played. While Richard Sherman was rapidly making his ascent as one of the game's premier shutdown corners, Tom Brady was drawing criticism from many analysts around the NFL. Tom Brady is under the most pressure of his entire NFL career. You see, the year is 2012, and Tom Brady was recovering from losing his last two Super Bowls to Eli Manning and the New York Giants. That's not to say that Tom Brady wasn't considered to be elite. He was still considered to be an incredible quarterback and one of the top three, if not the top quarterback in the entire NFL. But he wasn't considered to be nearly as legendary as he is today, because at the time he's only won three Super Bowls and those Super Bowls were almost a decade behind him. And despite coming off of a season where he threw for his most passing yards of his entire career at the age of 34, during his mid-30s, Tom Brady wasn't getting nearly the amount of respect that he deserved. Meanwhile, the Seattle Seahawks were trending upward, although not by much. The year prior, they were able to make it to the NFC wildcard playoff despite only having a 7-9 record. They recently hired Pete Carroll, and they were in the midst of a gigantic culture change. Marshawn Lynch would gift NFL fans one of the most legendary runs in NFL history during the Seahawks wildcard playoff game, and that legendary run came in Richard Sherman's rookie year. The 2012 offseason would be a make or break offseason for the Seahawks because they were already boasting an impressive defense and a ferocious run game. All the Seattle Seahawks really needed was a quarterback that could serve as a game manager to allow their defense to suffocate opposing offenses and their offense to simply control the clock by running the ball. So entering the offseason, the Seahawks would already make a huge power move in hopes of acquiring their QB of the future by signing Aaron Rodgers' incredibly promising backup, Matt Flynn, to an $8 million contract. The NFL Draft would see the Seahawks already building upon an impressive foundation with excellent draft picks. In the first three rounds, they were able to draft Bruce Irvin, Bobby Wagner, and a development project quarterback out of Wisconsin by the name of Russell Wilson, three players that are still on their roster to this day. That Russell Wilson pick was arguably the best pick in Seattle Seahawks history as he would come into training camp and beat out Matt Flynn for the starting QB position. Shout out to Pete Carroll for actually riding with Russell Wilson over Matt Flynn, because I know a lot of other head coaches would have potentially decided to start the quarterback who the team already invested $8 million in. But this would be all that the Seahawks would need in order to establish their identity. With a rookie quarterback that would throw for 26 touchdowns and 10 interceptions in his rookie season, while also adding four touchdowns on the ground, Russell Wilson was the perfect quarterback to command the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, the New England Patriots were busy making changes of their own. Drafting the dominant Dante Hightower and Chandler Jones in the offseason, the New England Patriots were in the midst of a culture-shifting move of their own. The Randy Moss era seemed to be over in New England, as he was traded to the Minnesota Vikings after their first game, which meant that all that Tom Brady had to throw to was Wes Welker, Brandon Lloyd, and Dion Branch, not to mention Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. But while this was all going on, there's one important detail we forgot to cover in the backstory of all of this. How was Richard Sherman doing? 
Well, Sherman had a huge chip on his shoulder. Richard Sherman believed that his old head coach at Stanford, Jim Harbaugh, sought to sabotage his draft stock. The fact that he was drafted by a division rival of Harbaugh's just added fuel to the fire, and the fact that he was playing for one of Harbaugh's biggest rivals in Pete Carroll amplified that fire. In his rookie season, Richard Sherman had 55 tackles, 14 pass deflections, and 4 interceptions in 10 starts. He was in fact so good in his rookie season that Pro Football Focus ranked him 16th amongst all cornerbacks in 2011. Sherman's style was extremely unorthodox because he was a huge body that could physically impose himself on other wide receivers. He would wear them out with trash talk and would use his skills as a former wide receiver to anticipate the routes he would be covering. Once the quarterback threw the ball in his direction, he would box out the wide receiver and catch the football as if he was truly the wide receiver, a role that he was extremely familiar with. Sherman would enter the 2012 NFL season as the Seahawks starting cornerback and alongside of him would be Brandon Browner and behind him would be Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas forming the early Legion of Boom. Sherman would begin the 2012 NFL season with a bang. In the Seahawks season opener, he would have four tackles, two pass deflections, and an interception against the Arizona Cardinals, although it was in a loss. But the Seahawks would win three of their next four games until they met with the New England Patriots in week six. Their first true test to determine whether they were truly a superpower in the NFL. Both teams had a 3-2 and two record, and the game was extremely close. According to Richard Sherman, Tom Brady would consistently talk smack to him the entire game. Sherman would talk trash the entire game to Brady as well, saying things like, please keep trying me, please throw the football in my direction, because I'm going to take it away from you. And believe it or not, Tom Brady dared to challenge Richard Sherman. But you have to understand, in those times, challenging Richard Sherman isn't really like what it would come to be. This was Richard Sherman's second year. So far, he's only had 14 starts underneath his belt. He's proven to be good, but so far, the jury was out about whether he was truly elite or not. There wasn't enough of a sample size to truly determine that. But in the third quarter of that very game, Tom Brady would have the ball at midfield, and on second and five, he would challenge Richard Sherman, and the result would be an interception. This would be Tom Brady's first interception in 179 consecutive dropbacks. So you know that this was a 50-50 ball to truly determine whether Richard Sherman would be able to come down with the football. Well, in the beginning of the fourth quarter, the Seattle Seahawks would be down by 13. Russell Wilson, who was starting in his sixth game as a rookie, would command an incredible comeback beginning with this incredible throw to Golden Tate and continue with this incredible fade to Braylon Edwards on fourth and three. Tom Brady would get the ball back and drive down the field but would be stopped on a crucial third and eight, where he was looking for Dion Branch. Then Russell Wilson would get the football back once again, and he would find Sidney Rice on this remarkable deep touchdown pass, putting the Seahawks up by one. Tom Brady would get the ball back one more time with a minute and 15 left, and in those days, if you give number 12 the football back with a minute and 15 left, down by only one, there's no doubt in our mind that Tom Brady would be able to at least get it to the 40 yard line in order to kick the game winning field goal. But something weird happened, something that most NFL fans aren't used to seeing. Tom Brady would go for and out to end the game. And that's where this iconic moment would happen. Richard Sherman would chase Tom Brady down and say something he really shouldn't have said. Because these words were the only thing that Tom Brady needed to hear to truly reignite the fire within him. Now look, I think it's a little bit of a stretch to truly say that Tom Brady just didn't have the motivation that he once had back then, but it is a possibility. There could have been a variety of other factors as to why Brady wasn't experiencing the success he should have back then. It could have been the team around him. His individual statistics were still remarkable, but I have a feeling that this just woke him up a little bit because Richard Sherman would say words that were so simple on message boards, memes, and Reddit pages everywhere. Three words that could draw out a true maniac out of the most legendary of individuals. Richard Sherman would find Tom Brady after the game and shout three simple words. You mad, bro? You mad, bro? Think about that. Imagine, 
you just faced against a fairly young team whose best players were first and second year players and a running back that was clearly a throwaway running back in Marshawn Lynch. And this team just came back down 13, beat you and completely stopped you on the defensive side of the ball and then taunted you at the very end. This was the apex of disrespect, especially if you're a three-time Super Bowl champion. Because after a comeback victory, those three words would drive anyone insane, especially if you are as competitive as Tom Brady. Now again, according to Richard Sherman, Tom Brady was talking smack to him the entire game. Sherman would talk trash the entire game to Brady by saying things like, please keep trying me, I'm going to take it away from you. And he would say this when the Seahawks were down. Brady would respond by saying, I'll see you after the game. So according to Richard Sherman, he truly wanted to make sure Tom Brady saw him after the game. But Sherman wouldn't stop there. As him and Earl Thomas would walk up to Brady and say, we're greater than you, we're better than you. You're just a man, we're a team. That's the Brady Bunch, and this is a defense. We've got 11 players out there to play great ball, and we're never going to let one man beat us. It's not just about one man. This would be a completely culture-shifting statement, considering the fact that the Seahawks were built around the 12th man and were literally composed of late-round draft picks that were all forming into this one dominant unit. It wasn't about individual accolades for the Seahawks, it was about strength in numbers. The Seahawks would build off of this momentum, riding that confidence, or arrogance, to establish the fearsome Legion of Boom. The Seahawks would lose in the NFC Divisional round that year, but would absolutely decimate Peyton Manning's Denver Broncos in one of the most lopsided Super Bowls in 2013. If the Legion of Boom needed any more confidence, stopping the most prolific offense in NFL history on the grandest stage of them all should give them all the confidence that they need. But the year after, the story between Tom Brady and Richard Sherman would reignite. This one interaction where they met two years prior would be brought up again. And this time, Tom Brady appeared to be ready for his revenge because these two teams would meet in Super Bowl 49, where Tom Brady would throw for over 300 yards, four touchdowns, but two interceptions against the Seattle Seahawks. This would be the most touchdowns Tom Brady has thrown in a Super Bowl for the entirety of his career. But the Seahawks appeared to be on the verge of a second consecutive Super Bowl, as they were a mere two yards away from a touchdown to take the lead in the final moments of the Super Bowl until Malcolm Butler intercepted Russell Wilson, and although Tom Brady didn't directly have the signature play of that Super Bowl, he did have some remarkable moments to make sure the New England Patriots were able to stay in a position to win the Super Bowl. Brady did have the last laugh against Richard Sherman because Tom Brady's Patriots crushed Sherman's soul to the point that his reaction to the interception became a meme. And this would be Tom Brady's first Super Bowl ring in 10 years, which would give him the boost he needed to command an incredible come from behind victory against the Falcons a mere two years later in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady and Richard Sherman appear to have tremendous respect for one another, with Sherman supporting Tom Brady throughout the Deflategate scandal. This rivalry seemed to be two extremely competitive stars who were each the face of their respective positions. It was never personal and it never escalated any further. But if there's one thing that any athlete can take away from this story, it's an obvious one. Never poke the sleeping giant because that chip on his shoulder is all Tom Brady truly needed to win his next three Super Bowls and I genuinely believe that.